What is going on guys? My name is Micah and this is going to be the 15th video in this 2D iPhone game programming series. Uh, in this video we're going to cover the game over implementation, so we're going to make it so that when the hero runs into one of these obstacles, a game over label is going to show up, and we are also going to make the game restartable when you click on the screen at game over. So to get started we're going to go into our my scene implementation file go down to the did begin contact method and before this said um, nslog did begin contact you can just delete that because now we're just going to call the game over method right here so it's going to be self game over and the did begin contact method should be good to go now because we only have one interaction in our game uh, which is between the hero and an obstacle we don't actually have to specify or figure out what two objects have come into contact so that's what this uh, SK physics contacts contact argument is for. Um, it has two properties called body A and body B. And um, that's how you can distinguish between different contacts. If, say, for example, you have like um, a different operation you want to run on something between a hero and an enemy, a hero and a wall, a hero and a door, um, so on and so forth. So if you guys want to mess around with that, um, you can look up the SK physics contacts in the Apple API, which you can find in help documentation and API reference. So now we are going to go to our game over method right up here. We can take out this nslog message and I'm going to do self.isGameOver equals yes. So um, this boolean variable will just let us know that um, when we tap on the screen, when the game is over, we want to restart our scene. So now we're going to create a SK label node, and this is going to be called the game over label. Um, SK label node, label node with font names. Now I'm not actually going to um, kind of hard type the Helvetica into this again. Now we're going to create a, um, a variable at the top of our class that will stand in for pretty much every single font, actually no, every single font that we use in our game from here on out. So we're going to scroll to the top here. Just under these global variables, we're going to put in static NS string game font equals Helvetica. So now anytime we're, we need to put in a font, we're just going to put in this game font keyword. And um, it's always going to set up Helvetica. In this way, um, in the future, if we want to change the game font, we can literally just change this single line and the entire game's font will change. And um, that's really nice for messing around and kind of tweaking things at the end of your game. So we can scroll back down, put in game font, and yeah, game font. And now this game over label is created. It's giving us a warning because we haven't used it yet. So we're going to um, set the first. We're going to set the text of this game over label to game over. Then we're going to add it to our scene. Self add child game over label. Um, one more thing, I'm just going to set the, guy, the game over label's position. As of now, it's going to get centered within our scene, and we want it to be a little bit above the center. So we'll do position equals CG point make 0, 100. So now if we rerun this, you're going to see that the game over function is going to get called. A game over label is going to get created right here. Um, it's actually overlapping our points label, so we'll have to reposition that. Um, but yeah, now that the user is notified that um, the game is over. And you see that if we click on the screen right now, the clear method is called, which is awesome. It's um, exactly what we want. So let's just reposition this to about 60. Um, we're actually going to go up to the points label. We're going to put the points label kind of further on the left. Um, Kind of a left of our screen, so let's just call this minus minus 200. Um, okay, so now we can actually go into our clear method after we do one more thing in our game over method. We need to um, create a new method in our ML hero class called stop. Now you saw that when I clicked again, the hero didn't actually jump. Um, and that's because he was actually on the wall. He was, he was behind that wall, so the wall was preventing him um, kind of from moving forward, because the hero was still moving forward during that game over um, 
after we had run the game over method. So we're going to create a new method called stop. This, it's just going to be one line of code. It's going to be self remove all actions. And what this is going to do is it's just going to take away this move right method that keeps getting um, the move right method that is running on your hero. And so that'll make it so if you land on top of one of the obstacles, the hero isn't going to keep moving and um, the user isn't going to be confused like what's going on because there's a game over label with hero still moving. That's a problem. So we can go into our ML hero header file. We can add that in. Let's stop. Go back into our Mycene class and then call hero stop. Not right there though, because that's super confusing. I don't know why, why I'm putting that in between all the details for the game over label. We can put that um, up here at the top. So now our game over label, um, the basics of it should be good to go. So in our clear method now, we're going to make it so um, the whole scene restarts itself. So one way you can do this is you can just create a new my scene object and you can um, you can just have the view present that scene, or you can restart all the points labels, restart the hero's position, and kind of um, restart the world and just set everything back to zero. And this easier way is by uh, creating a new scene. If you have a really complicated game that maybe takes a while to load, you would probably want to um, do the other method of resetting everything back to zero, just because that takes less processing power and it will go faster and smoother for your user. But um, we're just going to create a new MyScene class because that's easy. And this game is so simple that there's really no point to actually go through the whole reset process. So we're going to do MyScene scene equals MyScene, allocate it, then init with size, self.frame.size, and we're going to do self.view present scene scene. So now when we click this clear method, it's going to create a brand new scene presented to our view, and we should have a restarting game here. So you see it says game over, we click, and it restarts everything. And you can play again. Um, you see that when you land on top of one of these obstacles, that also was game over, and um, the hero doesn't keep moving because of our stop method. So um, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.